Good deal. Coach Sass, how are you uh, holding up? Are you seeing the players, anything? It's got to be tough because they've canceled these kids' school year. Not really well, canceled here, but they're, everybody's virtual learning. So how are you right. doing? Well, I've never had this much hair on my face. So uh, <laughs> this, this quarantine right now has given me a chance to grow a full beard. So I'm just enjoying the, uh, enjoying the look, you know, having fun with my kids. Um, like I said, it's a blessing to me. Being, uh, being a former athlete, uh, playing professional, um, especially playing professional uh, overseas, and even in the EBA, we used to kind of being isolated. You know, we, we, we go to the gym, we, we hang out with our teammates a little bit, and then after that, we, we may go out, we may not go out, but we go back to our room and we're to ourselves. And overseas, it's even, it's even more isolation. So a lot of pro athletes, uh, we're used to this. But uh, for a lot of people, this is, this is tough. Uh, I was just sharing with the fellas earlier that uh, I'm, I'm blessed, I'm in a good situation, but uh, there's just so many families out here that, 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 uh, that are struggling uh, economically. So I'm just, you know, praying for them and just, you know, hoping we can get through this thing. But we, we do have to be patient. This thing is so contagious. Um, and we just got to be safe. So every time I end a text or talk to my brothers or sisters, just say, hey, man, y'all just stay safe out here. Do the best we can. So I'm enjoying this time. A lot of honeydews, uh, cleaning out garages, cleaning out my study. So I'm just just being constructive with, with my time as much as possible. Um, my wife wanted me to let you know uh, that she coached the, uh, the Neil twins. She, she, and he had said that earlier, but she just wanted to let give a shout out to the uh, Neil twins and y'all were, y'all were great students. That question, but no, I haven't had a chance to see my, um, as, as far as personally, but what I do, uh, we still have to have virtual learning. So I still have to submit, um, submit workouts to them. I have them do the workouts. Uh, but the way, I, the way I set it up is I have a mental, mental exercise. So they may have to write like a, a page saying, talking about leadership. So every, every, every week, we're talking about something to challenge them mentally and stimulate them mentally. And then we also have a physical workout to where uh, I submit them a physical workout. Most of the time, it's just, you know, body weight. And then they, they know what to do as far as skill level. And they have, to, they have to video themselves doing it. And they have to send it to me. So that's the time I get a chance to, uh, to talk with them. And we, we, we can do Zoom and stuff, all that too. So got to stay, gotta stay relevant and, you know, be in contact with them. Uh, man, Mike, uh, I'm just happy that the younger generation get a chance to see it because they're the video generation. They have to see it in order to believe it. So we, you know, we call us old heads. We talk about how good Jordan was, how special he was. Uh, you know, most of us, and I, we call him the GOAT. Uh, and, and I don't take nothing away from LeBron, Kobe. When you're a professional basketball player at that level, they all are GOATs. Uh, just based on your perspective. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is my daddy's goat. So that's just how it is. But, uh, it, man, it's something special, man. I was, I was just excited. It was saying June 1st. My kids like, Dad, why are you so excited? I'm like, I'm just hyped. A 10-part documentary on Michael Jordan. I seen a preview. So, uh, man, it was, it was awesome. I thought they were going to spread it out over 10 weeks. But two, two every, uh, every week, I'm good with that. So it was awesome, man. High level, college high level, professional high level. You know what it is. You had to get paid to play a certain way. And if you didn't play that way, you're going to be either cut or you're not going to be in a rotation. It's, it's you, we, 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 we know how to adjust to that. If you haven't never played on that level, then it's different. Not saying you can't be a great trainer, a great coach. You can. But you have to understand the difference. And a lot of trainers and a lot of parents, a lot of people don't understand that difference between pickup ball compared to High school ball compared to college ball compared to professional basketball. It's just different levels and it's different ways of playing. I love all ball. I love going to the street ball playing. I love playing organized ball. We just love playing basketball. But those kids that learn how to adjust, those are the kids that are successful. So as far as the training, the cones, the falling down, rolling over, picking up the cone, juggling three balls, all that to me, that works a uh, skill set with confidence and stuff. That's fine. I don't mind you doing a little bit of that. It's like dessert to me. That's like dessert. You get to have fun. Like, it's just like shooting half-court shots at the end of practice. We just playing around. You may get one of those, one or two of those a season. Okay, fine. But you're not going to be rolling on the ground, juggling three balls, going back and forth, doing all these type of things. 
blindfold, getting up. You're not going to be doing all those things in the real game. <laughs> so that that phase was was very very prevalent for a while. But what happened was, like Ty was saying, those guys weren't being successful when they went up to the next level. So now some of the trainers start going back to the old school boring stuff, the situational stuff, because they understand like, hey, this doesn't translate over to the game. So my thing is with these young kids, it is different. That's why some of the old school coaches can't coach anymore. You do have to adjust and reach them and stimulate them mentally. It's just a different – they are totally different. They're not like us. They, they may don't love the game as much. You have to motivate them. You have to find certain things to stimulate them mentally to get them. It's, it's, I, I call myself Dr. Sasser. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm a psychologist yeah. and a psychiatrist yeah. and, a, and, a, and, a, and a father figure and a leader. So once, once you understand how to connect to those players to get them to do what you need them to do, that's, that's, the, that's, that's the hard part. That's the difficult part because – like, like some of you guys were saying earlier, it's so incentivized. And it's like, you know, why I have to do all that? Why I have to do that? And, and that's another thing. Our coach would tell us, run through the brick wall. This old school. Or go do this. All right, coach. Yeah. Run through the, I tell my, I tell one of my kids, hey, you got to run through, you got to run back on defense. They'd be like, why, coach? <laughs> and, if you get, if you, and if you're frustrated about that, it may be time for you to move, get out the game, but if you understand, say, you know what? Let me tell you why. Or let's sit down and have a meeting. Let's go over this. So that's the new generation. It's always why they need. They always need an explanation. They all because they didn't play like we played. You talk. You were talking about awareness. They didn't play as much as we played. We learned the game playing. Oh, I go to the gym. Mm -hmm. Old school. I got the ball. Old school being a post. Give me the ball. I had to learn how to do a post entry because they ain't gonna, I'm not going to be able to play no more. Yeah. They, don't have, they don't have that luxury. They love, they love training, which is good. They are way more skilled than we were. They, they, they got major skills, but their awareness of the game is lacking because they just don't play enough. And it's up to us, coaches, those that are coaching and those that are training, to help them uh, overcome that gap. And that, and that's, ladies and gentlemen, is the same speech that his Division One nephew had to hear for the last two years playing. <laughs> that's why he's a player now. Shout out to Marcus, man, for being Mark. able to play day one when he stepped on campus because of that. And, 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 and all of you guys, you guys, with the exception of Daryl and Eric, and Tim got a little bit of it. Yeah. Y'all were my young fellas. Yeah, absolutely. I, I took y'all, I would talk to y'all 24 7. Absolutely. Whether y'all liked it or not, I would get <laughs> on you guys very hard. And it was just it was just in me because that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to wisdom supposed to flow down, not up. Yep. Kevin Johnson asked a question in the live feed, and I just kind of want to paraphrase it. If you had to explain the difference or one significant thing, um, however you can ex best explain it, the difference between working out and development. That is a great question. I, I go first. I'll take a shot at it. Um, development is, to me, is a focus um, specifically going in to work on something. I really want to get better with getting to the basket with my left. I really want to work on moves that's going to create space. Um, I want to work on my one dribble pull-ups. You're going in development, and that's just the skill side. You also can have development when it talks about situations. Okay, how do I read the pick and roll when this guy jumps out with a hard head? Uh, how do I read the pick and roll? So all that's development. When you're trying to get information and learn something new, you want to you want to you want to attack it. Uh, it want, you want to be intentional when you go to the gym. Working out to me, and, and you guys may differ, or we we may agree. Working out to me is just going to the gym, doing something that you're used to doing, just getting better. If I want to go up and get 300 shots up. 500 shots up, you know, I'm going to do that. If I want to go do some cone drills or dribbling drills, to me, that's working out. If I want to just go to the gym, get some one-on-one, -on -one, two-on-two, uh, that's working out to me. So development is more intentional where you're going in. So if, if you're with me and, and I'm training and we're working on development and you come to the gym, okay, you just want to get up shots, I'm going to do my best to let you get up shots. But if I see some some glitches, if I – now that session may turn to a development session. If you if if you if you say, listen, we got to get that elbow in. Oh, let's go let's go do some form shooting real quick. Let me show you this. I see, I see you just want to come and get shots up, but 
let's get some development. So in development to me is more intentional. Working out is just going in, refining your game and what you already know. 